Namato Ratana Tayasa, may I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening. This is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. So today is Thursday 23rd of April 2020 as usual I am here online to be with you and to share some of my thoughts and how we can deal with this situation as we know we are all living at home isolating or so-called quarantine uh, and we have uh, plenty of things to do at home, I hope. And uh, this is just uh, one more activity uh, that you can join. So when we hear the word uh, quarantine, it's something like very negative. And also when we say isolating, also uh, there is a connotation of a negativities so we better take this as into rather than negative take it into positive with a sensible uh, way yes hello good evening margaret good evening sarala david good evening david and lena uh, sanon Doboj. sorry if i pronounce your name incorrectly so welcome so welcome to our evening session at half past six good evening margaret yeah warren uh, dylan pond so this as usual uh, half past six we're here and to learn and uh, ranjani hello and ranjani uh, it's quite happy it's nice to see you all yeah? coming back and uh, following and being uh, at this time together to learn and also extra activities for you it may be to extend or accumulating a little bit of more knowledge or also a guidance that you can uh, use it in your day-to-day -day life That's why I al uh, always encouraging that if you have anything you would like to Speak out or share then you can post Obviously staying at home alone or with the family there will m there must be some other emotional things that you would not you would not normally share to your partners or family members then you can write it to me uh, write it to me then i will keep it as a confidential uh, confidential as long as you do not permit me to speak it out <laughs> otherwise sometime i do speak it out if you do not say that it should be a private yeah <laughs> as example yeah and as a result I have been asked how do I deal when so many things and so many people come to you and explain and uh, so many people come to you talk about various things and all and most of the time the talks or the conversations about the family matters which is in negative yeah? mostly negative and as a monk I listen about it a lot all the family matters from uh, how do I start from children children's problem to the work problem from work problem to the family problem husband and wife problem and a friend's problem and people borrowing money problem uh, problem after problem uh, and then a gossip again uh, gossip is one of the greatest things that I hear about and then people ask me how do I deal with that 
Uh, how do I deal with that? So as a monk, we were taught to have a dustbin with the bottom em uh, bottom is not covered. Yeah, the bottom it bottom has a uh, the, the the hole in it. So as uh, as much as you put it, the bottom just goes off. Yeah. So like that, we have to be in that way. But now, normally, I use a simile of a dustbin. Dustbin that we have. Yeah. So dustbin from our sleeping room. Put it in there, and then take it out to the bigger dustbin, and then to the outside dustbin. Yeah, like that. And still, we know. It's still there. Sometimes we go back and then collect it, uh, un unwrapped, unwrap the uh, secrets that we have throw it away. So like that. Whenever you hear so many things, so many stories, you have to wrap it and then throw it away. But the best remedies, tools that I use is meditation. Yeah? So I normally just sit and meditate. I do not engage but however sometimes due to you hear too much it affects you too it affects you yeah and that as a result of that we have to develop this mindfulness meditation quite a lot and you will be able to dis detach uh, when time comes yeah so this uh, should be developed in this time of a quarantine that we are living in. Rather than thinking of this a self isolating or a quarantine or self uh, social distances, take it as a, such a wonderful time. Huh? Uh, like uh, isolation. During this isolation time, if you are living together with a family, there will be uh, some problems. And in that time, be mindful that how you will deal with that. Yeah, be mindful of how you will do it and deal deal with that. And every opportunity, everything that's happening is an opportunity to learn that how am I reflecting, how am I uh, reacting to it. Suppose your husband behaves differently, and then that annoys you, or your wife does something that really annoys you, irritates you. And obviously it will happen because you're living together so much. And that time, rather than thinking of the person, bring your attention back and then watch into your own mind that what's happening inside you, inside within yourself. How do you feel? Are you engaging with the feeling or are you engaging with the subject matter or are you enjoy or are you engaging with a person so if you're bringing a person into the topic that exaggerate more it's become a more stronger and if you concentrate on a subject it has a lesser and then if you are concentrating on your feelings then you completely disconnect from the person and then the subject so you're basically dealing with your own anger, own irritation, own agitation. And gradually you will see that how much it is affecting. So with this isolation time, you isolate yourself from these situations, these problems and these emotions. And then this isolation becomes such a wonderful moment that it is allowing you to learn. Learn yourself, learn your mind and how you're engaging. I think I have mentioned that no one can make us angry without our permission. No one can make us upset if we do not take those activities or those words into our brain yeah so everything that is happening everything that is upsetting is simply we take on board 
and with that we become the victim we may display different emotions but the first person who suffer is ourself first person is ourself so we need to think of that and reflect on that so when we reflect on that what will happen is uh, gradually we will be able to understand our own feeling the feeling that we are holding a feeling that it, that is just aroused and then think of it when there is no such feelings what are the state of the mind so this i think needs to develop in us during this time in order to deal with different types of emotions may arise yeah, different types of emotions may arise and it sometimes not just uh, families but also other things arise as well and other times you may have to rely on something else some other techniques and as you are living at home i would like to introduce one more technique is the physical exercise and that you can practice is the walking meditation yeah walking meditation and a walking meditation there are so many different types of a walking meditation you can practice at home it doesn't matter how big or how small space you have whenever you have emotionally disturbed due to the uh, family matter or due to your uh, your partner or due to some other issues or work that time do not stay still just do the walking meditation you may be doing just a brisk walk up and down up and down up and down walking and as you slowly your mind calms down and then you can concentrate on the walk maybe right goes left goes right goes left goes or simply aware of as you move in yeah right left right left or even you don't have to do it at all you simply walk slowly but be mindful and mindful of your walk and other times you can apply as a counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 like a 1 2 3 4 5 6 let's say the first time when you walk a five steps then continuously reminding that this is a five or six uh, the five steps and when you're walking it should be five steps at all the time up and down 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that and you're continuously counting that steps again and again and that also calms you down and again if you want to be a very serious practitioner and you have learned how to practice walking meditation then again you can do step by step there are six ste steps of a walking meditation that you can practice too and when you're walking for six steps of a practice it is such a such a long time you know and it's it takes a lot of time a lot of dedication a lot of concentration and a mindfulness as you walk in yeah, as you do the walking slowly and it, practicing very very slowly and the slow motion of the practice helps you to uh catch your mental activities how your mind is perceiving how your mind is observing things and this is also a form of a practice that develops the mindfulness that helps you to deal in day to day life and it's also a way of uh, uh, releasing our emotions as well yeah not only releasing our emotions it is also beneficial for our digesting digest system and it is also good for the physical exercise <coughs> yeah 
as a monk we are not allowed to do like or uh, aerobics and uh, bigger uh, activities to uh, do the, uh, for the exercise and keep the physical body fit so Buddha gave this walking meditation as a form of the physical exercise and during the time of the Buddha there was uh, one monk called Bakula he was one of the monks that who was very careful about his uh, physical uh, fitness and he always did the walking meditation and along with uh, mindful of the food uh, eating food and with that he was regarded as the foremost in the keeping the healthy diet and healthy a uh, healthy body yeah? so the walking meditation is also a form of the practice that you can practice at home whenever you feel upset whenever you feel emotionally down or whenever you feel irritated and rather than saying anything just do this walking for a few seconds or a few moments a few few rounds up and down up and down up and down and using simply just to walk and think about the subject or just to walk right left right left right left or just a brisk walk without having anything to do just walking uh, and if you become a serious then again you can extend your understanding of how to do walking meditation and sometimes even you can use the words but ultimately if you are practicing in order to cultivate the mindfulness and that leads to the liberation then the ultimate practice of the walking meditation should be understanding the true nature of rising and vanishing ability to see the cause and effects one become a cause to the next like when you lift it's become a cause for the uh, placing and then when you place one then another one will be and the placing become a cause for the rising of the another foot like that so ability to see and then as you rise that again further on the physical movement become a matter and the mind who is knowing become a, the mind the consciousness so with that you're separating between a mind and a body so the body is moving but the mind is knowing so there is a knower and then the knowing with that so as gradually that develops and separates become uh, separates between the mind and a body so this is again you can practice at home now uh, even simple steps but can give you a greater insight into it and which help to not only not only not only calming your not not, not only calming your mind but also insight into the further development of your mindfulness so uh, this also you can use too and then the, another one that I have heard it a long time ago when I was a young boy we used to sit down in uh, the meeting meeting huts in our village and each children uh, each child uh, will have to tell the stories and then we have to gather different stories from the traditionally we have heard from our uh, seniors or our uh, uncles or brothers and during that time normally we didn't have any technology no televisions and nothing so whenever darks begins evening then we all sit in one place and tell the stories and this story came at that time and I still remember that story the story is about dealing with the anger between husband and a wife the story is that husband he normally goes out and then drunk and comes back and fight with his with with his wife and this become a routine every day husband works goes to the let's say pub and then drink uh, alcohol and if he drunk and then comes back home and a fight with 
uh, his wife. This continued so long that the uh, wife couldn't bear. Now she didn't know what to do and she wanted to find a cure for it so she went to visit the temple. And the priest having heard the story gave her a bottle of a, a medicine. A bottle of medicine and told her every time when your husband comes back you put this medicine in your mouth for 20 minutes and the first day when her husband comes back he was drunk he began to shout he began to shout and shout and shout but she was having this medicine in her mouth she wanted to reply she wanted to shout back too but because the medicine which priest gave her she had to maintain keeping this um, medicine in her mouth until 20 minutes and so she constantly remind herself wait i will reply it after 20 minutes and she is keeping this medicine in her mouth so first day her husband was surprised why there is no interaction at all and then second day again she did it third and then after a couple of days later his her husband stopped arguing stopped going out and drink and the lady felt very very happy so she wanted to know what is the medicine about what a wonderful medicine that the priest has given so she went back to the priest at the temple and then asked venerable sir your medicine is wonderful your medicine is so good my husband no more drinking no more fighting what is this medicine and then a monk smiled eh? the priest smiled out loud and then and then uh, laughed out loud and then told her this is a secret water that i tapped from my back uh, my, my kitchen yeah so sometimes it is not what is the uh, conflict about sometimes we simply cannot bear whenever something happens we reply immediately and we respond immediately and as a result that's become a bigger and a bigger it's like a fire you're putting more fuels in and the fire become a bigger and a bigger and that creates more quarrels and fight and conflict and the story is simply if one stay calm and mindful that this is happening so in that case you don't need this water sacred water so called yeah? you don't need it all what you need it to be mindful of those things and not taking on board and just keeping yourself quiet and watching all your thoughts all your emotions rather than engaging with it rather than replying to those yeah? so as you're staying at home I'm pretty sure that a number of people may or already have this sort of a conversation and sort of a argument uh, between each other in this situation it is not easy I do understand but again we have to be sensible that this whole situation is so difficult and uncertain and the situation is so hard to understand and we do not know how long will it last and how and which way it is going to be so and if you are not able to make your home as a heaven as i had said you know and this become a very very difficult time and you will not have any place to feel happy you will not have any place to feel comfortable because even the family you cannot feel happy you f cannot feel the comfortable and safe then how could other place you can make it safe and happy and comfortable so learn to know your own mind whatever happens whatever is taking place 
simply rather than taking on board watch what are the feelings what are the sensations you are having at your mind in, in at that time in your mind dealing with that will definitely brings happiness definitely brings peace and harmony in the family and within ourselves too and if we can continue this way not only we will be happy in this life but also it paves the better life in the next life too that's why i offer this as a reflection on the night today with this reflection may you be happy peaceful successful be well and take care and further we will have a uh, evening chanting shortly if you are joining with us you're most welcome to join if not after half an hour you can have a break for this half an hour after half an hour we will come back again for the guided meditation so you are most welcome to join guided meditation at half past seven and if not see you tomorrow at half past six for the reflection talk and then chanting at seven o'clock and then guided meditation at half past seven i again remind you that if you cannot join for the uh, reflection talk or the medit or the chanting i would encourage you to spare at least this half an hour half past seven and then come and meditate together yeah it's extra one more activity that you look for and that will be your plan of a day and which will again makes you feel more that there is something to do and you feel more relaxed with this uh, and at the end would like to thank you all the supports and everyone who continuously supporting the center and dropping off uh, all the materials and the food and the medicines to the monks as well so with this may you be happy peaceful and successful see you soon if not good night <laughs>